Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back with a top list of 2019 most searched cameras. This time we're going from number 35 to number 25 from the camera store blog post and video, which actually the video got a bunch of attention more than the top 10. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go through the list with Juho from Camera Rescue all the way in Finland. Definitely, it has gotten a huge amount of views. It was like 59,000 views for a channel that has a few thousand subscribers. So I guess it's interesting, like obviously camera is always interesting and camera details are interesting, but it seems that this list is getting quite a lot of it. So we thought that we should, um, well, we did the top 10 and we did them very thoroughly. Every single one has a special video on Nico's channel. They're all about 10 minutes long. They have alternatives, but this top 35 list, it doesn't, uh, obviously there is 25 cameras more that we haven't talked about at all. The, li the list yeah. starts with 35 and I think uh, we're going to be covering each camera, not alternatives in this uh, ver video, and just talking about why we think maybe these were the yeah. heavy hitters on the searches. That's the idea. And at 35 is the Konica Hexar RF. Uh, it seems that the Leica M mount is the most loved uh, mount, at least by Google Hits, of 2019 in, in film format. And the uh, Hexar RF is, uh, well, I would say it's the interesting one of, of the list because it's uh, cheaper and it has uh, automatic winding and automatic many things that the Leica's, you know, would never have. Um, actually, I've had one in my hands, and I have to say the fact that it has aperture priority is one of those things. Like you have in the Leica world, uh, you have the M7, the Zeiss Icon uh, ZM, and then uh, I'm sure there's a Bessa that I don't know the name of. Um, but yeah, it's it's fairly fun. It's easy. I like the no advancing. It kind of reminds me of the X Pan, and uh, you know, it's a nice Konica's yeah. are nice cameras, and the RF is a pretty good camera overall and a max shutter speed of 1 4000 which is fairly nice there's nothing like it in the Leica lineup yeah and I mean it's it's also a bit smaller um, and you know it takes Leica glass and it's much cheaper I think it might be like well with those functions it is definitely the cheapest op option but at 34 is also a rangefinder a Contax G1 yeah, yeah. I, I, I own a Contax G2 and I've had the T, uh, T3. And um, they're actually really good cameras. The lenses are superb. Yeah. Uh, the AF is very quirky and it takes a while to learn how to use because it only yeah. focuses, I think, is on vertical lines. So if you have anything that has non-vertical lines, it goes crazy. A uh, good thing is you hear the lens if it goes very far off. It always fo misses focus by a lot. So you can, you know, learn how to love it. But yeah, the G1 is really, really nice and very inexpensive. Yeah, uh, I mean, the glass is getting a bit more expensive as G2 is, is getting expensive. But, uh, you know, it's still, and the G1 is, is not bad for what you get. Obviously, there is the risk that it will fail also. No, yeah, basically, I was going to say that the lenses at least can be used in a new body. So to me, the Contax G1 is like very much a better yes like t3 or t2 well t2 polaroid land camera 1000 is like the 33 and for this one i had actually had to ask why why on earth is this on the top 35 and it turns out that polaroid 600 series cameras um there is because it's it's a google hits uh like uh, statistics uh, so it means that there are items that are advertised on Google and uh, Polaroid if you advertise Polaroid 600 there's a lot of people googling for Polaroid 600 mainly because of the film so they've you know banned Polaroid 600 from their the, the, the advertising tag things but Polaroid SX70 and Polaroid 1000, which is like, um, you know, it, there's many of the 1000 series cameras and these use the SX70 film uh, and, you know, they're cheap. So I guess, you know, there's people still looking for those too. No, yeah, Polaroid is a top hit 
in my channel, like you write anything Polaroid and you get a lot of hits. I think it's still very popular. People still know the brand very well. And even though Instax is also selling really well, people still call Instax Polaroid. So that's why I think also it's on the list. Yeah, and that definitely, I mean, instant photographers and like uh, film photographers, they're a different bunch, like, or there's much more instant photographers. So there are more people Googling for instant stuff. At 32, we have a Pentax ME Super. No, I mean, Pentax interchangeable lenses are really small cameras. The P, like the Pentax K1000 is very famous, but the, the whole lineup is really good and the glass is superb. There's a texture to Pentax that, that I don't think any other brand has. That's why also the Pentax 6x7 is like high on the list. So yeah, no, no surprise there. Yeah, and I, I think with the ME Super, one, one of the main things is, is the price. It's, it's quite low. Um, there's a lot of Minoltas and Konicas and, and uh, things that are not on the top 35 list for, I guess, I guess two reasons. The, the first one being that uh, they were never ever that popular in Finland, so a camera store doesn't have that many of them. And when there isn't that many of something, you cannot advertise it. Uh, but uh, like the Pentaxes was were quite popular in Finland. The K series is I think it's only North America that had at least the K one thousand or like at least I've I've seen so few in Finland and so many in North America that it, it may might be true or you know someone from a Pentax fan can confirm it in the comments below. Uh, but uh, like anyhow, like ME Super was the K1000 of, you know, Northern Europe at least. Uh, Yashica Matt 124G is number 31. Yeah, I have one here in the studio actually just in front of me. And um, it's a great option to starting off with, you know, the TLR family. The Rolleiflex are the ones that take all the fame and the glass is superb. But Yashica has, you know, the mat, the 124G. The 124G gets more hits because it has the built-in light meter. And I think it's also the one most people talk about mm -hmm. on YouTube and forums. But all the lineup from Yashica TLRs are pretty much good performers. They're not the best cameras in the world, but they're super fun to use. And they're fairly inexpensive compared to their, you know, Rolleiflex brothers. Yeah, I would say with the mat one. 4G it has already the price the hype has gone so high that they, it's much more expensive than a Rolex cord or uh, at least my like recollection says so uh, and I, I've seen them go for a, a lot of money and yeah it's fine if if it works but uh, what I hear is that a, a, a mat is much less serviceable than a Rolex cord um, and especially the 124G is, is not that uh, serviceable because it's quite new compared to, you know, the TLRs of the world. It, it, it was quite a late TLR. Yeah, probably more plastic parts or, you know, not so durable parts. I'm sure the Rolly Flex and Rolly Cords have like more of that post-war like mechanics that are really reliable. Uh, the Rolleiflex actually is number 30, uh, 22.8F is, is the one uh, that Google chose for, for this video. Um, well, you know, a 2.8 Rolleiflex, how, how bad can it be? No, yeah, the, the, the 2.8F is the one that has the most fame. I've owned one and didn't get along with it, but that was my problem. And uh, they're getting older and they're getting, you know, sometimes more picky. Uh, but it's a great, great, great camera. And that 2.8, like, is just so, so nice. I, I really like the cameras. I just don't get along with them, sadly. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the video at the same time. And obviously, I, you know, just watching through the waist level finder gives you uh, some kind of goosebumps. Because if, if you're not used to TLRs and you start shooting with a waist level finder, and you know everything goes the wrong direction <laughs> you know in the beginning it's it's just horrible to try to compose 
I mean, yes, your body and your mind gets used to it quite used quite fast, but it's <laughs> the TLR experience is is it's uh, experience. No, it's it's some and also when you walk with, around with these cameras, they don't attract the wrong attention. You people always wonder what you're doing. They always want to know if it works, mm. and I think that is one of those added benefits of shooting like TLRs, like the Roll Effects. It's just a beautiful mechanical camera. And it just brings people smiles. Like you can get more street portraits with this than with any other, you know, DSLR or SLR or similar. Uh, 29 is Tenza Bronica ETR SI. The main benefit is price, I guess. 645 is, I think, becoming more and more uh, a reasonable format to many people because uh, the film is cheaper per shot. So you're getting 16 or 15 shots per roll yeah. of 120. And it, the, these kits usually go for fairly inexpensive compared to Hasselblads or, you know, Rolly Flexes or anything else. And in the 645 world, we have the Contax, you know, that's super high price and the Pentax 645N and N2 that are also high. The Bronica is like the workers, you know, uh, medium format camera. And it does really, really well. It's, they work really well if they work. Yeah, and actually, I'm quite surprised that it was on the list because it's, you know, it's not that common, uh, at least if here in the north. Uh, so people have been googling it uh, when when mm -hmm. it was available on yeah. the site, I guess. Um, oh, 28 is gonna be a long talk if we start winding this way. Like, yep, it wasn't on the top 10, which a lot of people were surprised. But yeah, the, the F3 is an amazing camera. I've actually only had one in my hand once, so I'm not an expert on the F3, but I do always, you know, I've always wanted one at some point. I mean, it's, uh, at some point it seemed a bit too professional, uh, like that it, it seemed easier to just buy a Nikon FM2 or FE2. Uh, but now that, uh, we are talking about serviceability and we're talking about reliability and we're talking about uh, buying cameras that are going into use and uh, into heavy use. The F3 has started to, uh, how would I say, like uh, get more interest. I mean, it, obviously it's been always le legendary, but no, it's it's gained popularity. I mean, if you go down the F line, the F4 and F5 are great cameras, but they're also much bigger. So the F3 is like the last professional Nikon F that you could really carry around every day, all the time. Um, and I think that's shown in size and people really like the idea of something smaller, interchangeable lenses, interchangeable viewfinders, interchangeable focusing screens. So. And then you can add the motor, which nobody really does anymore. But, you know, it has a lot for it in general. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, like now, now they are like getting serviced again. Uh, and you can get a serviced one for, I don't know, 400, 500 for, which is like for the camera you get. And if it's fully serviced, it's, it's quite a lot of camera, like compared to, you know, now uh, the next one is a Leica M2 and then we can go on on that whole debate of our Leica prices like worth the cameras or, or whatever but at least they are worth clicks because this is the only Leica body M body that's outside of the top 10. No, this is my favorite. This is the camera that I started with as a rangefinder uh, in 35, and it's it's stuck with me, and I now have two of them. And I probably will be the last camera I ever sell if I do sell all my cameras. I like the fact that it's 35 millimeter frame lines, which is amazing. Clean, clean frame lines, uh, 35, 50, and 90, which are I think the three lenses that I choose for rangefinder. And it's no surprise. And also price wise, it's usually on the lower end compared to the you know famous brothers like the M6 or the M4, well, M4 and M3 probably are there there, but the M3 always gets more attention. The M2 was like a step down, but I don't think it's a step down because they're still in the market and still working great. So that's proven its point. Yeah, and uh, like somehow if, if you would just go with the normal logic of, or how people are naming cameras nowadays that uh, there's a one, two, three, 
for blah 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 it's it's always uh, interesting to go with Leica and think that oh the M3 was the first one and then the two and four were after the three and uh, so it, like M2 isn't uh, actually older than M3 which many people maybe do not realize when they they are just getting into Leica M's um, but like as you're using it is it actually is it the camera or is it the lenses that people love about Leica M? I mean, if I have to give my own opinion, I like both things combined, but actually I like the camera better than the lenses. I don't mind putting Voigtlinger glass or uh, now we have seven artisans or TT artisans. Like there's more third party and expensive lenses. I think the way it works mechanically and the way it feels in hand, the weight ratio to camera body is to me the best of the, all the 35 cameras I use. So I've always said if there was no film available, I would still go around and shoot empty frames with this thing because it just feels so good. Oh, 26 is a Hasselblad SVC. Mm. Maybe I should just get the SVC here because SVC indoors is great. Like, have you shot it like as a documentary camera or only with the, the kind of uh, architecture landscape? I've, sh I've shot it in the streets. I've shot street photography with the SWC and a flash a couple of times and without a flash. It's a really fun camera. And the fact that it's so wide uh, ba basically doesn't let make you focus too much on focusing and composition. I, didn't, I never even used the top viewfinder. I would just kind of learn how the camera would see and just point and shoot. So it's a superb lens and, and it's a small body. Uh, Hasselblad construction and it's just so simple and lightweight to take it everywhere. You've taken it all around Europe so you know what I mean and even the States I think. Yeah yeah I, I yeah it's for for traveling it's super nice. Uh, during traveling it's it's a bit like maybe it, it was because I had it as a new camera with me so I wasn't that comfortable with it um, so I didn't actually um, take a lot of photos. I, I spent 14 days in the States and took one roll of, <laughs> of film uh, through the SVC. Uh, so, but like at home somehow, I, I felt like once I got comfortable with it, it's, it's a very special camera because it's such wide and then, you know, uh, square and it's a special camera. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And at 25, we have the Leica Mini Lux, which is, uh, well, it's a Leica again, uh, but it's it's actually a very decent compact camera um, and very well built. And in terms of that quality compact cameras, the Leica doesn't have an extra price tag. It's actually cheaper than the Contax T3, uh, obviously, which is not the same, but it's around the same price or cheaper than the Contax T2. And then there is uh, the Nikon 35 Ti, which is the same price too. So yeah, it has the it has the red dot to make sure that you know it's a Leica. And I think at the end of the day, uh, in the compact in the premium compact cameras, the contacts have all the hype. Um, and I think the Leica Mini looks as it's not really the Leica fans are usually M mount fans. And the yeah. Leica Mini looks it's it's a camera people have you know a lot of love for, but at the end, and the lens is probably great. But at the end of the day, the contacts is like what people look for in the, you know, premium point and shoots. And when they want a rangefinder or whatever, they go for Leica. So I think it makes sense that it's on the 25 of the list, but not being, you know, higher than a contacts or anything like it. And obviously it's quite uh, scarce also. So like it has gotten a lot of Google hits in that short period of time. And obviously they didn't have it for the video anymore. So. And it, like you, if you're a user of one of these cameras or, or whatever, like if you have used a lot of, let's say, premium compacts and you want to tell other people watching this video what you suggest as an alternative, uh, we didn't go into alternatives, so use the comments below uh, to, you know, post your alternatives for the top 35 to 25. So yeah, basically that's the list for the 35 to 25 uh, most searched cameras uh, of 2019. And we will be coming back with a 24 to 10 
uh, list in the next video because if not, it would be too long. And a reminder that we have the video from top 10 to you know top one already posted and then individual videos. I'll link all of those below, but it's all also at the camera store blog and uh, YouTube channel if you wanna see. So yeah, thank you Yuho for joining me for this little list overview during this stay at home time. Um, and if you guys have any questions or you wanna ask anything, you can leave a comment below. See you guys to the next one.